Buongiorno. Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel where I'm finally so pleased to say that we've been able to travel abroad. Welcome to Italy and what a stunning, stunning day it is. Now, today the video is about the Alfa Romeo Stelvio Quadrifoglio and of course when I knew I was getting that car it had to be brought to Italy and we had to try out the Stelvio Pass which is arguably one of the best roads, well in Europe but in the world. Just one thing though, it is still 2021 and uh, yeah we kind of can actually go to Italy so we came to uh, the Welsh version. Yeah, this isn't, this isn't Italy. This is Port Merion in Wales. A very curious place. Looks can be deceiving today because we are superbly lucky that it is really sunny. But anyway, why are we here? Well, I did want to take the Stelvio to the Stelvio Pass. That would have been ideal, but we couldn't actually do that. So I thought, let's keep with the Italian theme. Let's wear some Gucci trainers and a Ferrari jacket and bring the Alfa Romeo Stelvio to the closest thing to Italy that we can actually get. But, Wales is known for incredible driving roads as well. And one in particular named the Evo Triangle, one that everyone seems to know, and one that I've never actually experienced before, is supposedly on a number of lists, the best road in the UK. So why not come here first, pretend we're in Italy at least, and the sun does really help, and then take the Stelvio over to, well, a budget substitute for the Stelvio Pass, which is the Evo Triangle here in North Wales. I must say a big thank you to Free Trade for sponsoring this video and making the entire thing possible. But for now then, before we jump back in the car, I'm gonna stand here for maybe five, 10 minutes, pretend I'm in Italy a little bit more until realistically later on it starts pissing it down and we realize we're not. Anyway, come with me. It's a shame the Evo Triangle didn't quite work out, but where I am now is the Pen E Pass. If you've ever climbed Mount Snowdon here in North Wales, you've most likely driven up this road. And it is equally spectacular, if not more so because of the dramatic mountainscape pretty much either side of the road. Only problem with this road is traffic, but for now at least, we've got a little bit of a clean run. So right away, straight off the bat, I'm in race mode here in the Stelvio. Now what that does is open the valves fully, makes the suspension really firm. I mean, to be honest, it's pretty firm anyway, but it makes it really, really stiff. Turns ESC off and all the sort of other nice driver aids that you get in the other modes. We'll talk about that in a minute. And it does feel pretty special when you're in race. Now I've been super lucky that Alpha gave me this car for two weeks. So I've sort of had a chance to experience it in more or less every scenario. And for me, the car pretty much goes into race every time I step into it. You can flick it across into manual and it actually says race is better enjoyed with manual shift selected. And I have to say any excuse to flick one of these paddles, which feel like they're straight out of a Ferrari, honestly, I'm gonna take it. Genuinely, is the most satisfying thing about this car is flicking through the gears. And that's quite an appropriate time to talk about the brakes. The brakes on this thing are huge. I'm pretty sure they're double calipered. I'm not even sure. I don't technically know too much about them, but let me tell you, they stop and they stop good. While we're talking about things that I love, I mean, the sound, Mm, I do love it actually. It is, it's a very addictive sound of that classic sort of upshift fart you get on quite a few of the German models actually. But although it's not the most organic and enjoyable sound through and through, it's a very addictive thing and you have to sort of step on it to get those farts as you go through the gears. And yeah, I have to say I'm finding any excuse to do that to be honest. real 
standout on this car for me compared to almost anything else I've driven at all. Any normal car, you know, this might be considered a normal car in the sense that you can use it every day. You could take your kids to school in it. And I'm still sort of trying to work out exactly who and why you would buy this. I haven't quite worked out who it's appealing to, but what I'm trying to say is the steering is a real standout on this car, a real standout. It has literally point and shoot steering and the amount of input required to get yourself around a hairpin is really minimal. I mean, comparable to something like a Porsche, but perhaps even more sensitive than what you would find in one of those. I mean, it makes my Z4 feel like a boat and makes my 7 Series feel like the Titanic because they are so cumbersome in comparison in terms of the way that this thing just, just turns. And it's got such a nice weight to it, the steering. You really do feel connected with the road. This thing sticks to the road uh, like you wouldn't believe because you look at it and it's, well, it's, it's sort of a crossover. It's a mini US, uh, USB, it's a mini SUV, sort of comparable, I suppose, to like an F-Pace from Jag or an X6M, horrific car. But you look at it and you wouldn't expect it to drive like it does, but it really feels like something you could throw onto Goodwood Motor Circuit or the Nürburgring and actually have a lot of fun with it. Body roll is minimum for the size of the thing and the way it grips and the way it pulls through corners and the fact that you've got the paddles fixed on the steering column here means you can pull them easily as you're going around a bend. It's quite remarkable, it's, it's super, super impressive. In terms of the acceleration then, well, I mean, it's a headline figure with this car, 3.76 seconds to, to 60. I can sit here and do a ton of acceleration, some of this, um, and tell you how fast it is, but it's, it's just, 101 people have probably done that already, and it is hard really to, to really convey that through a camera. The best way to convey through it, well, the best way to find out how fast this thing is, is to sit in one and to experience it for yourself. Now, luckily today, I've got my brother Jacob with me, helping me film, so I'm thinking he might actually get him in the car, he might be able to help and demonstrate that because he doesn't really have much experience in fast cars, so we'll get him. Okay, so this is Jacob next to me. Jacob's been helping me film. Hello, Jacob. Hello. Cool, no one cares. Um, so, you haven't had too much experience in fast cars? Not other than with you. And you're now in a fast car? Yes. So I wanna show the viewers how fast this is and I thought your reaction might be the best. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wait, where's it? Jake? What? The, f the f Jacob? The f happened? Uh. Whoa, Jacob. Oh dear. talk about its looks. I personally really enjoy the way this thing looks. It's a strange looking thing and I guess the only disadvantage with it is it feels really special to drive but if you're looking at it 
from the front so people sort of coming towards you they might not necessarily think it's anything special because it does just look like a standard Stelvio yeah there's some sort of nice vents in the bonnet but they're too high up for anyone to really enjoy for me I love well driving this thing but looking at it from the rear because those quad exhausts just really set it off and make it look special but I think it's a great looking car and other people seem to as well you drive through towns and villages and as long as I'm not redlining it in first gear I seem to get nods of approval people like the way this thing looks and I think the Misano blue paint color on this definitely helps it's also a bit of a pussy magnet and uh, I'm not talking about the cats in this image I'm talking about my brother Jacob <laughs> but yeah joking aside it is a good looking car I think probably best in class if you look like something something like an x6m I think that's hideous but this has a real nice bit of styling to it. The wheels look great, paint works great. And in terms of the interior as well, much more interesting in here than some of the German counterparts with from the big paddles to the plethora of carbon and those sort of analog old school Ferrari style dials right in front of me. It's a really enjoyable car, great to look at, great to sit in and great to drive. So then whilst the rain has ever so slightly started to come down, I'm gonna pop the gearbox back into automatic and flick, you've got three drop, well you've got four drop modes, you've got race, you've got dynamic I think it stands for, uh, which is the roughest of the other three, N which is in the middle I think is neutral or something like that, and A is even more uh, soft and actually limits the torque, so I guess if someone was driving it who didn't want all the power, you can limit that. I can't remember what the A stands for, but I'm just gonna put it into N for now, turns the valves off, softens the steering a bit, makes the throttle response a lot less sharp. That is one thing I will say that I don't like about this car, is to fully get the exhaust sound, you need the car in race. However, once you're in race, there's no way to uh, adjust the throttle response. So say you enjoy listening to uh, the exhaust sound, as I do, and it's nice sort of when you go through towns and villages to hear it burble away. Well, to hear that, you need the car in race, but then your problem is, you're jolting all over the place because the throttle response is so violent. It's really hard to drive smoothly in race, which if you like hearing the exhaust sound, is a bit of a shame. I still put up with it because it's worth it, but just one thing to bear in mind, there's no sort of configurable M mode like you'll get in, in a BMW M product where you can have it set every way you like. There's only these presets. But anyway, we're in N now, which seems to be most rounded, valves are off, throttle response is nice and light, so is the steering. and brings me on to the next point really that it's a bit of a cliche and you hear this with lots of cars nowadays um, but it is true that this just does everything really nicely it is a great cruiser it's super quiet fuel economy not fantastic it only returns around low 20s if you're trying so really not something to buy if you've got a mind for fuel economy when you get on it you're into the low teens and so over my two weeks with this car I've averaged about 19 miles per gallon that's one nine so not uh, that good on fuel but then it is essentially a Ferrari power plant up the front a 2.9 derived from a Ferrari block and it feels that way as well these seats are fantastic they hug you nicely and you can adjust that all electronically in a number of ways really really impressed with the seats when I first sat in them I was like they're gonna be a little bit stiff but actually I've done tons of miles almost 3,000 miles in this car over the last 10 days or so and I haven't had any back problems at all my only complaint in terms of ride quality is that even in the softest of damper settings the softest of suspension modes it is quite a rough ride it's particularly bad over speed bumps so if you're looking for something to run about town in and you're rarely ever going to take it up the hills or to roads like this you know if you're looking for a school run car this might be fun but it won't be the most comfortable there's better products out there for that reason but if you do just want one car you're trying to convince the missus of something that's really fun and she's not having any of it just say I'll get a Stelvio it's an SUV plenty of space for the kids plenty of space for stuff in the back as well it's got all the nice sort of safety features with cruise control which is adaptive and lane control but what she doesn't need to know is what happens when you flick it into race mode and you can really enjoy the car uh, I was saying to someone the other day you could actually have this as a Sunday car it is that much fun when you find an empty B road it really is
So as you can see, I genuinely do have probably 90% of what I've said is positive about this car. It's, I love it, I would, I would own one. I really, really enjoy it. The one thing that's uh, troublesome for me is I just can't quite understand who this car is for. Yes, it could be a school run car, but surely the Julia, the saloon essentially variant of this would do that job just as well. There's not that much more space in here. Guess it would be better for a dog, something like that. It's, it's a weird one. I'm not sure exactly which market this applies to, but potentially I'm not the target customer, so why would I understand? However, having said that, I would almost sway to this over the Julia just because of its looks. I think an aggressive SUV, there's just something kind of cool about it, and I do feel cool driving it. I love driving this car, and I think it looks fantastic on the road. Okay, well, I thought as we're now here back at the hotel, surprisingly in unbelievable Welsh weather. We all seem to get lucky, Jacob, with the weather, we don't do. we? When we were in Scotland last time, it was superb. And literally, as I'm saying that, the sun is now shining on my face. It is lovely. Now, you may be wondering why we haven't done some sort of crazy challenge with the Alpha, as I've done previously with that Range Rover from John O'Groats to Land's End, although that didn't go to plan. And last time I was with Jacob, my brother, we did Ben Nevis to the Shard on one tank of fuel in my 7 Series. So why haven't we driven the Alpha across the English Channel, you might be wondering. Well, to be honest, the main reason for that, and the reason I can think of anything in particular, apart from driving it to the Stelvio class, which was my original idea for this video, is because that car is just so well-rounded. It does almost everything. There's not really a challenge you can put it up against that would seem unlikely to accomplish. Now there may be, you may be thinking of something right now, but not that I could think of that came straight to mind because it is just a very well-rounded car. It's great at almost everything. Over the two weeks I've had this car, I've literally used it for absolutely everything because it is, like I say, just that great balance of, I wouldn't say comfort because that suspension is firm, but you can just get in it. That ZF eight-speed box is the best in the business. It's brilliant. Uh, but then just with the flick of a couple of buttons, you can chuck it in race mode and you feel like you're driving something actually really special. Now, I won't lie to you, obviously, with it being a newer car, it does have a little bit of numbness to it, like everything that's new these days. But the steering on these Alphas is amazing. It requires such a tiny little amount of input to go around sort of tight corners and it, it, it feels really sporty. And then that soundtrack you get and those big paddles just makes it feel special when you do want to flick it into race. And have a bit of fun. So I hope you have enjoyed this video. As I said at the start, if you are one of my 70% of viewers that are not subscribed, please do consider subscribing. Now for more stuff like this, I've actually got another press car on the way next week, which we will be doing some sort of comparison with my 7 Series. That gives you a little bit of a hint. And of course, big thank you to Free Trade for sponsoring this video and making the entire thing possible. That sounds like a cliche, but quite literally without the money from them, these trips would not be possible. So it is with a big thanks to them uh, for sponsoring this video. Anyway, like I say, hope you enjoyed it and I will see you all very, very soon. face of a man who just had a satisfying beer. Mm. Welcome to Betwasi A Coed. And uh, well, I've been a little bit mean about Wales, so let's find the one saving grace that Wales has. Mm. Here it is. Welsh fudge. Mm. Oh, yeah. Mm. Mm. Is yep. it good? Oh, yeah. Mm. Mm. Let's go, man. <laughs>